I just got this uh, digital discovery from Digilent this morning. I uh, bought it on Monday. Today's Wednesday. And I bought it even though I already own an Analog Discovery 2 and an original Analog Discovery, which I'll talk about in a second. So you might wonder why am I buying this? What are the advantages, if any, over the Analog Discovery 2 or its predecessor? And kind of where am I going here? Well, where I'm going is I'm going to move into a phase of videos that are primarily intended for students who are doing embedded systems in their EE curriculum or their computer science curriculum where they might be using some of the products from Digilent or from Arduino or other uh, popular vendors and so this is going to be a little bit of a rambling overview. One of the things I'm going to do is compare the digital discovery to the analog discovery to, and when I say compare, I don't mean an in-depth comparison. Comparison, I mean just generally looking at the differences. I previously have done a comparison between the original Analog Discovery and the Analog Discovery 2. I don't think that they still sell the original, so that may be an obsolete video because this may be the only one that's available, but they are selling the Analog Discovery 2 and the Digital Discovery. So what is the fundamental difference between these two? Well, the difference is in the words Analog and Digital. The Analog Discovery 2 contains circuitry for testing analog circuits as well as circuitry for testing digital circuits. The digital discovery only works with digital circuits. It does not have, for example, analog scope. This contains two scope channels that can be used for analog signals. This does not. The Analog Discovery 2 also contains a waveform generator, two-channel arbitrary waveform generator that can generate analog signals, sine waves and so on. This does not. What this does contain is more inputs and outputs, higher speed, and it is optimized for use on digital circuits. By digital circuits, I mainly mean embedded processors like the Arduino. Now this is an Arduino Mega. You may be familiar with the Uno, which is a smaller version of this. On the right is the Raspberry Pi. This can also be used. If you are taking a course in embedded systems or in embedded systems programming, then you already know what processor you are using. Now, let me show you one thing, though, that you need to be aware of. Digilent sells a variety of boards that they call the Chip Quick. I'm sorry, the Chip Kit. This is a part of the documentation for the Chip Kit Max 32 you may notice that it bears a striking resemblance to the Arduino Mega that I just showed you. But it is not the same board. The Arduino Mega uses an ARM processor. The chip kit uses a PIC processor. Notice over here. Now, Digilent has provided a multi-program or multi-platform IDE or Integrated Development Environment that makes this board look like an Arduino for purposes of writing and downloading programs. But be aware it's not an Arduino. So there will be times when things that work on an Arduino won't work on this and vice versa. It used to be you could download the IDE directly from Digilent, but they've recently changed that. So if you have an old system, you might want to go back 
and download the ChipKit plugin for the Arduino IDE. Let me say that again. If you have the Arduino IDE, perhaps because you're using Arduino, and then you want to add the ability to use the chip kit, what you have to do is download the plugin. It plugs into the Arduino IDE, but it gives you a series of chip kit boards. Up there is the UC32. That is this chip kit board. And for those of you that are not going through this, I apologize for wasting your time, but students have problems sometimes because a lot of the courses that are taught using the analog discovery, and I suspect the digital discovery is going to substitute in many of those, use the chip kit boards. And they sometimes get confused over the differences. This is a true Arduino. The chip kit boards are a PIC microcontroller with an Arduino form factor. Okay, enough of that. The uh, next thing that I'd like to do is talk about the inputs and outputs of these two units. The Analog Discovery 2 is intended for students and hobbyists and others that are doing experiments using mixed signal, in other words, analog and digital. If you don't have an analog oscilloscope, you cannot use the digital discovery to work on analog circuits. So you're either going to need an additional analog discovery too, or if you only have a digital discovery, you're going to need an analog oscilloscope. Now that can be a USB oscilloscope, it can be a, a lab or uh, so on. And uh, when I get into some of the uh, review of this unit, I'll be comparing this to a typical mixed signal oscilloscope. But for right now, let's look at the difference in the inputs. Here you see a depiction of the Analog Discovery 2, and you notice that there is a scope channel 1 and a scope channel 2 positive. And then down here you see scope channel 1 and scope channel 2 negative, ground, and some of these others. Notice over here on the right that you have digital I.O. signals from 8 through 15. And up here you have digital I.O. signals from 0 to 7. It's this portion that is the part over here that's called digital I.O. that is contained within the digital discovery. The digital discovery has only digital inputs and only digital outputs. In general they work at 3.3 volts. You can use lower voltages and you can set thresholds from about 1.4 volts down to whatever level you would like. But because it does not have the analog signals, notice that, for example, it has data in here, in this case data in 0, data in 1, data in 2, and data in 3, and then down here data in 4, and so on, where the analog discovery has the scope inputs and the arbitrary waveform generator outputs. So that's one of the big differences between the two. Another difference is there are two new headers on the, digi the digital, digital discovery. Maybe I'll just call it the digital discovery from now on. 
On the left side are, uh, is a header for digital inputs and outputs, and on the right side is a, a separate set of inputs and outputs. Now we'll be talking more about these later. This is just intended to give you an idea of where this fits in the embedded systems coursework. If you own or have worked with or used an Analog Discovery 2, you know that it comes with, or it, you can buy as an accessory, a board that plugs in to the Analog Discovery and converts the analog signals to B and C connectors so that, for example, you can use traditional oscilloscope probes on the Analog Discovery 2. This box will not work with the digital discovery because this is an analog box. In other words, it is to bring the analog signals, that is the inputs to the scope and the outputs from the arbitrary waveform generators, to B and C jacks. This will work with the original analog discovery. Also, there is a power supply available for the Analog Discovery 2, not for the Analog Discovery Original, that allows you to increase the power handling capability of the power supplies in the Analog Discovery. That is not available in the Digital Discovery, so in essence you, you have a choice. You can vary the inputs and output voltages from 3.3 volts down to zero, but you no longer have the, the variable power supply feature that was available in the Analog Discovery 2. So if that's, uh, so why would anybody buy the Digital Discovery? Well, one of the definite places where this applies instead of the Analog Discovery 2 is when you're working with a pure digital environment. For example, if you're doing Arduino development and you're only using digital signals from and to the Arduino, then the digital discovery is an appropriate way to generate and test the signals. A lot of the functions in the Digital Discovery, in, in other words, essentially all of the functions in the Digital Discovery are in the Analog Discovery 2, except the Digital Discovery does have this high-speed header, which allows you to run at a higher speed than the Analog Discovery 2. Now, I do not know whether this header will work. It's the same pin configuration, but I do not know if it will work on the Analog Discovery 2. But because these are all digital inputs, and because these are a mix of digital and analog signals, I suspect they do not. And this might be an appropriate place for me to mention. I have no connection with Digilent, never have had. I think a lot of the company, and I uh, really like their products and, and advocate their use, but I receive no compensation from and of the uh, Digilent company or any of its backers. In fact, I receive no compensation except my retirement income. And as a result, for me, this is just a hobby. So everything I say here is my opinion. It's not official Digilent information. So I hope I won't mislead anybody in, in these videos. I am trying to, as best I can, tailor the presentation to work with the existing coursework, hardware, uh, textbooks, and so on that are used in various universities and uh, labs to teach embedded systems and embedded system programming. But it's simply my idea of what you might want to know or what's useful. At any rate, let's move on to something more interesting. On the left is the 
manager, the, the workspace manager for the analog discovery two. And on the right is the workspace manager for the digital discovery. Let's take a look at some of the differences. If you notice on the left, you have scope and wave gen. Those are not present in the digital discovery. You have supplies. Now, there are supplies in the digital discovery, but they're not quite the same. You have a logger, which is not present in the digital discovery. Then you have logic, patterns, serial I.O. I'm sorry, static I.O., network, spectrum, protocol, and script. Now, the digital discovery does not have spectrum or network. It does have patterns. It does have logic. It doesn't have, I don't know if I said network, it doesn't have spectrum, it doesn't have network. So what does it have? Well, it has supplies, and we'll talk about those when we get into the review of the digital, uh, of the digital discovery. It has logic. This is a logic analyzer. And here it's actually superior to the analog discovery too because it has more inputs and higher speed. It has patterns, that is the ability to generate uh, essentially arbitrary digital patterns. Understand these are not waveforms, it's not sine waves, these are ones and zeros, but the analog discovery too can also do this, but it cannot do as many of them as the uh, digital or the digital discovery. Static I.O. is the same in both, or essentially the same in both. It's an ability to provide some signals that you can manually control or at least set uh, in a static manner. It has protocol, which is also now present on the Analog Discovery 2, and we'll talk about that. This is a really good feature. What it allows you to do is both drive and monitor various protocols. So, for example, if you're trying to get a spy device, a serial peripheral interface, to work, you can plug it straight in to the Analog Discovery 2 and using the protocol settings, you can create a, a handshake or an exchange between the two and monitor both the master and the slave in, in the process. So, for example, if you're working with things like in the digital world, they're called PMODs, which is just peripheral module. In the uh, Arduino world, they're often called shields or uh, sensors or other things. And Sometimes getting them to work is a real problem. So the protocol not only allows you to do the monitoring, but it also allows you to serve as the master or the slave for an SPI device or an I2C device or something of that sort. One thing that is different about the uh, digital discovery is it provides a different way of doing script. At least it looks different to me. Now I am not very familiar with the script feature on the Analog Discovery 2, but based on what I have seen, this looks like a very useful feature. And there is a script feature on the Analog Discovery 2. So these 
are the things that we're going to be looking at at various points. The two that are going to be the most used are going to be the logic and pattern with some use of the protocol and a slight use of the static I.O. So this introduction has gotten a little bit long. I think what I want to do now is break off and in subsequent videos I will try to do some experiments using this new digital discovery. Where appropriate in those videos I will compare it with the analog discovery, but in general this is not a review of the analog discovery. I'm going to restrict the experiments to digital experiments, primarily using uh, embedded systems and sensors and things of that sort. So I hope you've enjoyed this introduction. It's probably been extremely long because I've tried to cover a lot of a lot of areas, but I felt like I needed some sort of baseline from which I could move in several different directions in future videos. So stay tuned. I don't know when those videos will appear, but I hope you've enjoyed this one and I hope you'll enjoy those as well. In the meantime, have a nice day.